Good. All right, evening, guys. My name is Matt Stroop. Hope you guys have been doing well so far. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be talking about the death penalty, and my main claim is that the death penalty has significant drawbacks as a form of punishment. So, I'm going to be talking about four things. Number one, the death penalty is an unconstitutional procedure. Number two, it is being supported less and less by the public as well as judiciary officials. Number three, it is a risky procedure. And number four, it is a costly procedure that costs state governments billions of dollars to run. Now starting off, the most common form of the death penalty, the, legal, the lethal injection, violates the Eighth Amendment. Now the Eighth Amendment protects the accused from cruel and unusual punishment. So what exactly constitutes cruel and unusual punishment? According to Duhaime's Law Dictionary, cruel and unusual punishments are punishments which involve unnecessary and deliberate infliction of pain, which are both aspects of the lethal injection. Even Justice John Marshall stated that the punishments are cruel and they involve torture or lingering death, which is basically the intention of the death penalty. Now there, are now there are several cases in which prisoners have suffered horrifically because the drugs used for lethal injections wore off before the prisoners had died. George Kendall, an attorney at Squire Patton Boggs, who had represented capital punishment clients since 1979, highlighted some of these cases in his article, Is the Death Penalty Unconstitutional? So the first case he talked about was about an inmate in Ohio that could be heard gasping and snorting for more than 20 minutes after receiving those drugs. Second, a case in Arizona, an inmate gasped for nearly two hours before being pronounced dead. And finally, in Oklahoma, condemned inmate Clayton Lockett actually awoke during the execution process after receiving a large dose of midazolam, the drug they commonly use in lethal injections, and suffered greatly before his death. Now moving on away from the constitutionality of it, let's talk about public support. Now, the death penalty is increasingly being abolished by state governments as a result of low public support. The United States' encouragement for putting its citizens to death is at a historic low. Prosecutors are seeking capital sentences far less often, and jurors, even in highly, highly aggravated cases, are imposing long sentences instead of death. Even longtime supporters of the death penalty, including former prosecutors and state attorney generals, are announcing their opposition with increasing frequency. George Kendall also indicated in his article that since the year 2000, seven states have abolished the use of the death penalty, including some Republican states, and that not many states are far behind. Now moving on, the possibility of irrevocable mistakes exists, exists with the use of the death penalty. So basically, once an inmate is executed, there is absolutely nothing that can be done to make amends if a mistake has indeed been made. And there is considerable evidence that many procedural errors have been made by the court system in sentencing people to death. A recent study by Columbia Law School found that two-thirds of all capital trials contained serious errors. When they were retried, over 80% of the defendants were not sentenced to death, and 7% were completely acquitted. The study indicated that most of these court decisions were overturned due to false testimonies of witnesses as well as DNA evidence. Now finally, the death penalty is a costly procedure. A common argument made by death penalty advocates is that the death penalty system costs significantly less to operate than to maintain prisoners serving life sentences. This is actually far from the truth. According to state and federal records obtained by the Los Angeles Times, maintaining the California death penalty system costs taxpayers more than $114 million a year more beyond the cost of simply keeping the convicts locked up for life. Now, I want to ask you guys a question. How much money do you think California has spent using its death penalty system since 1978? Does anyone guess? Four billion. How'd you know? <laughs> I've heard this before. <laughs> but yeah, that's correct. Judge on the Parker. <laughs> But yeah, that's correct. Judge Arthur Alarcon, a circuit judge of the U.S. Court of Appeals, and Professor Paula Mitchell, a professor of law at Loyola Law School, have calculated that the cost of the death penalty in California has totaled over $4 billion since 1978. Now, another misconception of people that people have is that once you send someone to death, like that's it, they just go straight to be executed. That's actually not true either. There are many components that take place when sending someone to death. First, there's $1.94 billion spent on pretrial and trial costs. There's another $925 million spent on automatic appeals and state habeas corpus positions because most death penalty cases are appealed almost immediately. There's another $775 million spent on federal habeas corpus appeals and another billion dollars worth of costs of incarceration. So in conclusion, the death penalty has simply outlived its purpose in our judicial system and has become a financially detrimental, unconstitutional, risky, and unsupported form of punishment.
You asked. I'm just. <laughs> All right, the proposition's clear, uh, layout of the structure is fine. I think there's you know, plenty of controversy on this, although I think uh, the aspects of it are controversial have to do with the riskiness and its cost. Uh, the constitutionality issue, there's one place where you say that the purpose is to torture. I think that that is a little bit problematic, but the examples that you cite, I think, do suggest that there may be some problems with the techniques that are being used. Uh, I, that seems to me like it would suggest that it wouldn't be uh, unconstitutional if we just shot, hung, electrocuted, or gassed uh, prisoners. So most of your argument has to do with uh, lethal injection, and the purpose of lethal injection I don't think was designed to save money, but rather it was to reduce the pain and suffering. If it's not working, then maybe it should be gotten rid of. I think that that's the argument that you would be making there. Uh, the arguments about it being risky, I thought those were pretty good. And uh, the costly issue, you obviously have some data on that, so I thought that was pretty effective at the end. Uh, sometimes I think you needed a, li a little bit more information on each of the points. You're sometimes relying on a single piece of data to support one of your inferences, and I think that's maybe a little risky. All right, thank you.